Well, the appointment of administrators came after a long period of pre-appointment attempts to restructure. But what administration is, is a change of control. So you've got administrators stepping instead of the directors in charge of everything. But in Arium, you had that happen twice. So you had the administrators come in and originally Grant Thornton, then replaced by Cordamentha. So you had two big changes of control. Um, but what it really meant for everybody was, I think ultimately now, because we're at the end, we know that it enabled the businesses to be packaged up into their optimal way to be sold and then sold off with the funds being transferred to the creditors. And I think what you'd see is, I think with Arium it wouldn't have really been possible for that to happen, is my personal view in a pre-appointment scenario. I don't think the directors had the same freedom to sell that the administrators and the deed administrators have had in the administration procedure. I'm sure the Arium directors would have loved to have had the safe harbour reforms in effect. It would have given them the comfort that they felt they were pursuing the right outcome for creditors and they were taking steps that um, would have led to a better outcome for creditors. So they would have genuinely believed that as they were taking those steps. Again, though, I think in hindsight, we'd probably say that the plan that they were adopting prior to the appointment, certainly from the lender's side who we acted for, we would have said that plan was not the right plan and we didn't think it would have ended in a better return for creditors. And in fact, we may well say that the outcome compared to the pre-appointment offer was superior out of administration than it was for the pre-appointment proposal that was put. So it may well be, perversely, that the safe harbour wasn't available um, to the directors, but we'll never know the answer to that because the re reforms are not in effect yet. The deed of company arrangement put in place for Arium is unprecedented in the Australian market. It's a completely new frontier in Australian restructuring. It's a very, very significant development um, and we were proud to have a hand in it, but we also credit Arna Block Liebler and Leon's Wire in particular for coming up to this structure. Um, the aggregation structure and the way that a complex corporate group was able to be reorganised and positioned then for sale created huge benefits for the creditors and for all stakeholders. I think the innovative way in which the deed of company arrangement was put to the court and the involvement, the change in disclosure and, and just, just a completely new paradigm, it's hard to overstate how important that was for the Australian market and I think we'll see that structure again on big deals. It's a structure certainly worth considering. Um, at a high level, three large syndicated facility agreements and then an assortment of bilateral facilities, receivables purchase facilities and hedging transactions. Interestingly, broadly on the same terms and conditions and what you would expect to see in the context of a large listed investment grade uh, borrower. The difficulty I think for the banks was that Arium was rapidly ceasing to be uh, investment grade. So the importance of the refinance of the GSO facility was critical. Um, Arium had gone into administration. The administrators were desperate to create stability. And then on the side you had GSO who had taken security over the most valuable asset in the Arium group, threatening to bring the whole thing down through their own insolvency proceedings. So the courage of the banks to fund into that and to repay GSO, it's 120 million. Important because we got rid of GSO. Also important from the bank's perspective because they agreed to fund in circumstances where they were not guaranteed that GSO would release all of their securities. There was still a debate on that point, uh, but they thought it was so important that they moved ahead, funded it out, and ultimately were victorious against GSO. So the financing structure changed post-administration, primarily due to the work that the restructuring team did. Um, and quite cleverly were able to create a document which they called the override deed, which effectively overrode all of the rights uh, of lenders and combined them into one voting group. And that streamlined decisions. It also streamlined their ability to put propositions to a very, very large lender group. Um, and also assisted, I think, in maintaining confidentiality in relation to certain information bites in a world where lenders want to trade their debt. You can't trade your debt if you have confidential information. 
So the override deed cleverly dealt with those issues.